Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Monday, April 15th, 2024. And I believe today is tax day, for one, so I hope you paid Uncle Sam what you owe him, or I hope you're getting a big refund that you can, what you can do what you want with. But it also is National Glazed Spiral Ham Day. I love one of those big hams, you know, I just like to just sit there and munch on it all day long. And it is also National Titanic Remembrance Day. And, you know, I talk about cruising quite often here in the on the broadcast, so that's that's one thing that always is in the back of my mind, and then I thought, well, you know what, I cruise in the Caribbean, so if I'm down down there off the coast of Mexico or something, and an iceberg is there, then it's really my time to go, so. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to talk on the subject of love. I entitled the episode, We Are Known by Our Love, because as Christians, we should be loving others. But it seems when you go into some churches today that there's anything but love there. And I've been looking at and been sharing things and posting things on this site called Threads. It's a new um, social media thing. It has something to do with Instagram, I think, but I'm not real certain a whole lot about it. But it's really disheartening on there because all of it seems to be is a bunch of people complaining about Christians and the Bible and the church and and things like that, and how the negative run-ins they've had with Christians and and things like that. It got me to thinking, you know, why don't we show love anymore? And it's just not in the church. It's just not on social media. It's just not Christians I'm referring to here. It's really just about anybody. I mean, it seems to me since the, the quote-unquote pandemic that we as a nation have lost our minds and turned into a bunch of people that want to do nothing but argue and fight. I, you watch clips of sporting events and and things in those Facebook reels, and what do you see but a bunch of drunk people fighting in the stands. And, you know, it happens on cruise ships, it happens in Walmart, it happens in wherever. And what has happened? You know, we don't tolerate each other anymore, let alone love one another. Road rage is at an all-time high. And, and you know, it just seems that our world and our society has an absence of love. And it's disheartening. Because, because that's, that's not, especially when it comes to Christians, especially when it comes to those in the church, love is something that should be central to our message, but not only to our message, but central to our lives as well. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 13, verse number 34 and 35, Jesus says this, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Now here in this part of of the Gospel of John, uh, Jesus had washed the disciples' feet. They had the Last Supper. Jesus sent Judas on his way to go and do the things he was going to have to do in betraying him. And Jesus starts giving some last-minute instructions to his disciples here. Among that is the topic of love. And You know, Judas had left. He was on his way to go betray Jesus. The disciples would need love if they were going to carry this gospel message. And, you know, God loves us in spite of our sin. He hates our sin. Make no mistake about that. But he loves us in spite of that. That's why Jesus came to pay the penalty. If God didn't love us, then he would have never sent Jesus. He would have said, hey, you need to follow the commandments. But he didn't. He loved us so much that he gave Jesus. 
in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 15, he says, Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. You see, we need to love others. I'm going to talk about that verse here in a minute. We need to love others in the same way that God loves us. All of us are nothing more than sinners. Sinners that are saved by grace. Sinners that need salvation. That's, that's all of us. That characterizes each and every person walking the face of this earth today. And we need to share the love of God and love others the way God loves us, even the people that sin openly. Even to people that sin openly. Paul said we need to speak the truth in love. We need to speak the truth in love. In that section of Ephesians, he was talking about false teachers. Well, we have so many false teachers today that is teaching false things. And we need to speak the truth in love. It doesn't mean to hate the person. It doesn't mean to dislike the person. It means that we have to speak the truth in love and love others the way that God loved us. Look at what he says here. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. What if God treated you in the way that you love others? Did you ever stop to think about that? What if God loved you and treated you the same way that you love and treat others? Love should be central to our lives. He says that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Then by this love, he says, shall all men know that you are my disciples. You know, back in Jesus' time, that's how they knew somebody was a Christian, by the love that they had for others. And it seems the only way we can identify, well, it used to be we could identify Christians by by coming out of church in a, in a suit and tie. Now, I don't wear a suit and tie to church, and, you know, maybe I should, but I don't. But we have a whole group of people today that is, is in church, sitting in our pews, and then you walk out, and we treat others like garbage. Whether it's the person at the restaurant that is serving you your food, or it's somebody that's driving slow in the fast lane, I'm guilty of that one. We're not showing love. And God commanded us to show, show love. Jesus commanded his disciples to show love. And if they were to show love and love others in the way that God loved them, then guess what? You and I need to do the same thing. He says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. By this all men shall know that you are my disciples. That's why the world today doesn't see Jesus in the world because those of us that are his followers don't love the way he loves us. We're judgmental. We criticize people. And some of that could be misconstrued because we are speaking the truth in love. I understand that. And we need to do that. We can't candy coat the message. We need to tell others their need of a Savior. We need to tell others that they're sinful and that they need forgiveness. But we also need to demonstrate love because that's what God called us to do. Let's go over to the, to the epistle of John. 1 John chapter number 2, verses 10 and 11. John says, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Now the light and darkness John's referring to here is always the light was the good things of God, the darkness is sin. And he talks about that in detail in chapter number 1. I'm not going to go back there, but I encourage you to take a look at John chapter 1. So therefore, what, we, what John is t teaching us here is he that loveth his brother is walking in the light, is abiding in the light, the light of God's love, the light of God's direction, the light of being being right with God. But he that loveth not his brother, 
he says, is in darkness and walks in darkness and doesn't know where he's going because that darkness is blind in his eyes. Did you ever try and walk around a dark bedroom in the middle of the night when you need to get up and go to the bathroom? You find all kind of stuff in the darkness, then, don't you? When you step on it, when you kick it, and yeah. Well, that's what we're walking around in if we don't love others. We're walking around in the darkness of sin because we're not loving others the way God loves us. But if we are showing love to another people, and we are loving people the way God loves us, even those that sin openly, then we're walking in the light of God's love. You know, I'm hoping this past weekend, I talked a little bit about threads, and this past weekend, I hope that I, I planted some seeds in there by showing the love of God to people. It's not my duty to make the harvest, but it's my duty to plant the seeds or to water the seeds and allow God to take care of that. And then over in chapter number 4 and verse number 20, John writes, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Well, that is a great question right there. How can we love God who we haven't seen, but yet hate our brother who we have seen? Mm. Verse number 12 of chapter 4 says, No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. No, we haven't seen God, but if we love others the way we're supposed to love others, we'll see God in that person. So friends, let me ask you this today as we start off this brand new week. Are you showing the same type of love toward others as God is showing toward you? If not, why not? Father, I thank you for this word today, this message that you've given us, Lord, and I just pray that you help us to love others the way that we are supposed to, to, to do, to follow you, God. And Father, I just pray that you help each person that's listening to this episode to love like you loved. And I just pray that you help us to, to be able to, to break down the stronghold of the devil and share your love with those around us. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Remember, get into God's Word and allow God's Word to get into you. Then share that Word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Have you seen Dad's will? Yeah. Have you noticed I'm not in it? Well, of course not. You didn't exactly have a relationship with him. Okay, so there was that time I needed some money and took his precious painting and sold it for a hundred bucks. It was worth a million. Who would have guessed a few brush strokes on canvas would be worth so much? You shouldn't have taken it in the first place. Well, it doesn't really matter now that Dad has his painting back. What? Yeah. Someone paid a million dollars to buy that painting and then they gave it to Dad. You're kidding. Nope. So Dad should be happy. I still don't understand why I'm not in his will. Have you ever asked him to forgive you? What for? He got his painting back. You're right. The debt is paid. But to heal your relationship with Dad, you need to ask his forgiveness. All of us are guilty of sinning against God. But Jesus paid the price for our sins through his sacrificial death. To have a relationship with God... Have you asked for his forgiveness? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com.